here's the argument. Guys, you ready? You're going to learn. If you're focusing, you're going to learn. God's wisdom is Jesus, right? Everyone listening? This is a Jehovah Witness argument. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Okay. Oh. If Jesus was the God, that means he's created by God. Why? Because in Sirach, we're told the wisdom of God is created. This is where they try to deceive you. Now, they'll use Proverbs 8 as well. All right. Wisdom was created before all things and prudent understanding from eternity. Right. Okay. So wisdom is created. Right. So if Jesus is God's wisdom and wisdom is created, what does that mean? That Jesus is what? Uh, it's not God. Because he's what? He's created. created? He's a Christian. Oh. All right. Now, here's where they deceive you. The Bible speaks of creation in one of two ways. I need you to listen, everyone. This is part of your Christian heritage. And this is where people don't understand biblical language. The Bible used the word create in two senses. It'll use create to mean. Created out of nothing, ex nihilo, or being born out of something. Let me repeat again. Let me repeat again the analogy. I was born September 14, 1972. Now, if someone says to me, did you exist before you were born September 14, 1972? Yes, I existed in my mother's womb for nine months. This is why we consider abortion murder. The unborn child is a human life from conception. He is a living human being in his mother's womb before he's born. That's why abortion is murder. He's not only human when he comes out of his mother's womb. He or she is human in their mother's womb. So just like I was born September 14, 1972, but I already existed in my mother's womb before I was born, so being born doesn't mean you didn't exist before your birth. Nobody believes that. I existed in my mother's womb before I was born. Likewise, the Bible and poetic language describes the wisdom of God as residing within God, in the bosom of God, in the heart of God, in the mind of God. And then right when God wanted to create, he birthed, he begat. He brought forth wisdom out of himself, out of his holy mouth, because that wisdom is the word that he uses to create. So wisdom was there in eternity, uncreated, inseparable from God, springing forth from God without separating from him. That's the language. Wisdom was already in God, within God, from before creation, within God, because here it says wisdom was created before all things. Pronunciation from eternity. That means wisdom was there before creation, in eternity, in God, and was brought forth, born out of God. Here, let me prove it to you. Now, if you guys are listening, here it goes. Sirach 24, verses 1 and 3. Wisdom will praise herself and will glory in the midst of her people. In the assembly of the Most High, she will open her mouth. Now, notice where wisdom is. She's in heaven with God in the heavenly council glorifying herself in front of the heavenly host and in the presence of his host she will glory i came forth from the mouth of the most high and covered the earth like a mist so where did wisdom come out of from the mouth of the most high that means so god if the wisdom came, wisdom came out of the mouth of the most high that means wisdom existed within god with god inseparable from god right so was wisdom created out of nothing, or did wisdom already exist in God and came forth, born out of God, because it came from his mouth? Wisdom was in God forever. So wisdom is uncreated, right? Yeah. So what does it mean that wisdom was created? Meaning, was it produced from nothing, it came into being from nothing, or that wisdom that is within God, inseparable from God, there before creation in eternity, came forth, out of God, being born out of God. See the difference now? Yeah, I see. That's why it says, I dwelt in high places, and my throne was in a pair of cloud. Who is the only one who sits in throne in a pillar of cloud? God, right? Yes. Okay. So that means if she sits on the throne in the pillar of cloud, then she's divine, not a creature, because only one 
who was in the pillar of cloud at the time Moses is Yahweh God, and he sits in throne. But wisdom says, I was in the pillar of cloud on the throne. That means she's not a creature. She's fully divine, eternal, and came out of God's mouth. That's why when it says, from eternity, in the beginning he created, meaning before creation, in eternity, I was created. What does it mean, created? Meaning I was there in God and born out of God, not created from nothing. I came out of his mouth. And for eternity, I shall not cease to exist. So this actually points to the eternal begetting, the eternal generation of the son that he's not created, but he's begotten, not created. Okay, now watch. Because they're saying Jesus is the wisdom of God and God's wisdom is created, therefore Jesus is a creature. No, that's not what it says. Wisdom is not a creature created out of nothing. Wisdom is the uncreated, eternal characteristic of God that was within God, a part of God, from eternity, and then God birthed it out of himself, brought it forth out of himself through his mouth. Well, if it came out of his mouth, that's why wisdom is equated with his, his word, because what comes out of God's mouth will be his word. So wisdom comes out of God's mouth, and therefore wisdom is the word that comes out of God's mouth, and it's uncreated. Everyone catching this? Before I move on to the next point, if you understood my argument, you obliterated Joe's witnesses and Arians and Arius. This actually proves the eternal begetting of the Son. The Son is uncreated, begotten, not created. Begotten before creation. Thus, like Justin Martyr said, Tertullian said, Irenaeus said. Now, now let's turn it against them. Because here it says, Jesus is what? 1 Corinthians 1, 24. He's the power of God, right? All right. Now, now, look how this proves too much. Watch here. You ready? Okay. Now, not only is Jesus wisdom God, he's also what? The power of God. Okay. Now, Christ is the power of God. Now, we got a problem, Arians, because watch here. Romans 1.20. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, namely his eternal power and deity, has been clearly perceived in the things that have been made. So they're out without excuse. Now, is God's power created or eternal? It's eternal. But if Jesus is the power of God, then how can he be created? If God's power is eternal, He's not. and Christ is God's power, what does that make him? Not eternal. All right. Not only that, but 2 Peter 1, 3. His divine power has granted us to all things, because God's power is divine. It's unlimited. He is able to give us everything we need to live godly and holy. So now, if God's power is divine and eternal, and Jesus' power of God, doesn't that mean that Jesus is divine and eternal? Yeah, it means that. Okay, so game over, brother. I hope that answered your question. Did you guys understand my answer? This is actually the objection I raised against Greg Stafford in his debate. And to be all honest, honestly, he did not answer. Okay. All right. Um, in your book, and I don't have the page reference, uh, so I apologize for that, uh, you make a connection between Jesus as the wisdom of God with Proverbs 8.22. One of the passages you use is 1 Corinthians 1.24, where Christ is said to be the wisdom of God. And on that basis, you make the equation. Yet that passage also says Jesus is the power of God. And in Romans 1.20, the power of God is said to be eternal. Using your method of exegesis, why don't you conclude that because Jesus is the power of God, he is therefore eternal in light of Romans 1.20. No. How come you're not consistent in your exegesis? That's my question. It's page 231, Greg. Because the power of God is never personified in the way that wisdom is in the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs personifies wisdoms and wisdom in a number of ways that are attributable to Christ. So an identification of Christ as the wisdom of God is simply one means by which one can connect the dots, so to speak. There's no reason to go looking for someone who's called the power of God because no one else, no one ever is in a personified way. The power of God's never personified outside of that reference, I should say, whereas wisdom is.